Hello everyone, in this video, the step 4, we will show how can we set up the trend or the trace to show the curve of the side point input and output of the PID. Basically, we would have two ways. One way is using the trace function from the controller so that we do not need a HMI system. We can use the trace to monitor the analog input and the analog output channels. Or if you have a HMI, or using the laptop as a HMI to monitor the value using the trend function. I will show how can we set up that trend. In this step 4 sub A video, I will show how can we configure the trace, how we can use this built-in function inside the controller. In next video, step 4 sub B video, I will show how can we use the HMI trend function. So from the previous videos, we set up the analog input channel. This value channel 1, that is uh, the scaled value from the analog input. To demonstrate the trace function, I will grab this value into the trace wheel and read this value from the trace wheel. Regarding the trace function, that is one built-in function from the 1200 controller and the 1500 controller. Both series controllers, they all have a trace function, which is here. From the signal test purpose, we do not need to set up the HMI to monitor the analog and the digital signals. We just need to use the controller and use the TI Portal software to monitor the values. All right, let's see how can we do that. Double click this uh, add a new trace. And uh, we can rename this uh, trace. We can name trace analog. Okay. And uh, firstly, let's grab the analog we need to monitor. For example, we need to grab this analog input. And then we can also grab one analog output control, that is uh, this AO real source. Okay, those two values, one is uh, analog input, one is analog output. This is the signal source. And then let's go to the recording conditions. This is the sampling, how we can sample. This is one advantage from this trace function. As we can see, this is a time base that is our cyclic or the interrupt of the CPU. So if we use this trace, actually the sample time could be very fast. Basically, every cycle time we can sample one time. Especially if you want to catch the signal in every cycle time. But in this case, we will only monitor the analog signal. For the analog input, actually, we do not need to too fast. So we can use a slow interrupt as a time base. Let's create a new cyclic interrupt. Organization block. And select this cyclic interrupt. Let's set a 500. OK, 500 milliseconds. Select the OK. So from here, we can name cyclic interrupt 500 milliseconds. Click OK. And this OB30, uh, that is uh, 100 milliseconds, we can also rename this. That is uh, 100 milliseconds. OK, we do not need to program anything in these uh, OBs. Because once we download those OBs, and uh, the controller will automatically run those OBs based on the cyclic time setting. For example, this is uh, 500 milliseconds. So every 500 milliseconds, the controller will run this OB31. So let's go back to the trace here. And this time, the sample, we will select this. Okay, We will use uh, 500 milliseconds as a time base. If that is a one cycle, that means every 500 milliseconds, we will sample this uh, analog signal. And if we want to use a one second as a sample time, so we can select the two cycles. That means the one second will be used as a sample time. So once I select the two cycles, we can see the result. It will show one second. That one second, that is the actual sample time. And the recording duration, so we can select it can depend on the time or depends on the samples. This is the maximum records in the controller. As we know, this trace function, actually this function is using the controller's load memory to store all those data. So it has limitations. 
which means if the sample time you set very short, for example, every cycles you need to sample one time, so that duration will not too long. But for the analog signal, if we set a 500 milliseconds or one second as a cycle time, this duration could be very long. That's why usually this trace function will be used as a troubleshooting or signal test wheel, will not be used for the data historical storage. Regarding the trigger mode, we can select this uh, recording immediately or triggered by a tag. Sometimes, if we want to start the record function uh, when the signal turn on, so you can select the second selection. But for the analog sample, we can select this uh, start immediately. Regarding this uh, measurement on device, uh, it will select if we want to store the data in the built-in load memory or the external memory card. So in my case, I'm not using the memory card. I'm using the built-in load memory to load the program. But uh, some special case, if we are using the memory card, you can use this memory card to record the measurement value. For example, if we go to this uh, program info, we will see for my controller, the load memory on this uh, controller, that is a uh, four megabyte. For the Siemens memory card, for the bigger memory card, we could use the 24 megabyte memory card. That allows you to store much more data in that memory card. But most of the case, we could use the load memory. Okay, basically we configured all the things. If we recall, actually they are very easy. Here, we gather all the variables we need to monitor, and then we need to figure out the sampling time. And basically that's it. And after this, let's shift to the diagram. And from here, that is a one empty page here. Currently, all those pages are still in our TI Portal software. We need to download this configuration into our hardware. Keep in mind, all these trees are come from the hardware. That is a one built-in function into the hardware CPU. So let's click this. Uh, transfer the trace configuration to device. So with this download, the hardware will know there are two variables we need to monitor and the trace in this uh, trend. Currently, it's just offline. We download the configuration already. We haven't started the recording yet. So to record this value, we will hit this uh, active recording. So once you hit this, you will see the value got changed. So this time, if I rotate this uh, potential multimeter, you will see the value will change. And uh, we will see, because we have uh, two values here, if you only want to see the value one, you can shut it off. And uh, this allows us to just uh, monitor this analog input channel only. And uh, the minimum and the Y scale, we can adjust that. For example, for this channel, that minimum range, that is a 0, 0.0. And the maximum value, that's a, actually the maximum, that is a 6 volts. So we can type in the 10 volts here. So this time, if I rotate this potential point meter, this right curve will change. You will see. I will make it bigger. And from this corner, we will see this uh, REC is a flashing. That means this recording is processing. See? And then you can drag this uh, duration. You can watch the range on that moment, how that value got changed. Also, you can click this uh, buttons to measure the actual values there. For example, measure what the value during that time. And we can see the value in the column on the right. And you can click this uh, 100%, so it give you an over picture, and you can size this range. It's very convenient. All right, this is the analog input. If we turn on this, so this is our analog output value. 
let me flow this uh, window and uh, let me change to this uh, analog output channel value. And here, if I click the online, if I change the 50 to 30, we will see this uh, value got changed and this trend will record this. And this is the trace function from the CPU. That is a built-in function from our hardware controller. All right, so with this trace function, we do not need any additional HMI. It can quickly build up a trace and monitor process so that we can quickly monitor the process change. All right, this is the method one. And method two, we will use uh, HMI and use the train to function from the HMI. So to stop this uh, trace, I will hit this uh, deactive rec recording. Also to save the memory of the controller, we can hit this uh, delete the trace from the device to release the room. Okay. All right, that is the trace. In next video, we will talk about the HMI train function. See you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.